All right, everyone, it's only 2019 and hell just froze over because Hillary Clinton says something that I pretty much totally agree with, which is that 2018 was a dark time for our country, I would say for the whole world mostly. Look around the world right now. There's a lot of negativity, a lot of the turmoil and chaos. Part of that is a major worldwide cultural paradigm shift. Some of it, though, is a little bit more malevolent than that. But here's the thing. Here's where we obviously diverge. Hillary Clinton thinks it was a dark time for our country because, oh, our president's out to lunch, you know, Trump, um, more racism and stuff like that. Well, yeah, okay, that's, you know, I guess your part is an opinion. Now, I think it's a dark time for our country, or has been, because we've seen the beginning of the dissolution of the old mentality of the Internet, which was very much <laughs> America first, oddly, in favor of sort of a, a muddled, globalized, fascistic authoritarianism. I said years ago that the most important thing that we could do uh, as far as activism, as far as politics goes, is defend free speech online. Why? Because it bleeds out into literally every other aspect of life. You've got a war. The war is important. You should stop the war. Generally speaking, it's not going to be justified. It's not a defensive war. It's some stupid invasion. It's some war of occupation or some stupid shit like that that was dreamed up by people who are millionaires that want to be billionaires by selling blood to people. Okay, how do you stop the war? What's the easiest way to organize the kind of protests and activism you'll need. <laughs> the internet. Fucking on your online profiles and shit. You know, using your, your smartphone and your tablet and your laptop uh, as a form of activism. Now, it doesn't always end there. Here, here's where some people who want to do activism, here's where they, they lose out. They sign the petition, they think that they did a really good job, and ultimately it doesn't go any further than that. But, as we've seen, it can generate real-world results as well. Meanwhile, while people are complaining about online deplatforming, there have been people, you know, you know Loomer there, uh, you know, handcuffing herself to Twitter HQ or something like that. It becomes real world. Or people picketing outside of Google HQ or something. We saw this in Tunisia many years ago when the internet was instrumental, especially Facebook Messenger, oddly enough, I wonder if this could be done today, in organizing counter-protests against uprising uh, uh, zealot groups to try to maintain the level of secularity that they had. And they were successful. The internet was instrumental in organizing the kinds of activities that led to the downfall of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, and they were successful. Why do you think, by the way, the neoliberals who orchestrated all of that bullshit uprising to try to stamp down on these people and make their lives miserable want to censor the internet so much? Because they're afraid. They're afraid that people, they're, they're afraid especially of people like us. People, people who have larger audiences because, hey, you drop a video, it goes viral, all of a sudden there are a million people marching in the street because you brought to light something that the establishment didn't want brought to light. Now this is a very potent weapon against authoritarianism. Who do you think wants this censorship? It's authoritarians. I think that it's still the most important battle that we're fighting. Yes, it is more important. The internet literally is serious business. It's serious business in a fiscal sense. Why do you think they're trying to fiscally deplatform every other content creator that, that steps out of line? Oh my god. It's not because they're worried, oh, people will see our brand as a negative thing. We'll be, we're associated with this person. Nobody cared years ago. Nobody cared for the last decade about, oh, PayPal works with this person who's edgy. Nobody cared. Nobody got to platform because it was understood. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Those craptivist groups that are rising up are basically just pawns of the establishment anyway. They're literally fighting for corporate fascism. But you're not going to hear about that during the New York uh, New Year's Eve celebration of the free press. Oh yeah, the biggest threat that we are faced with right now is that every anti-war, anti-censorship voice is at constant hazard of having their life ruined and being doxxed and attacked and, and constantly inconvenienced. Never gonna hear about that. No, you're gonna hear about how Jim Acosta was very sad because a mean tweet was made. Oh my god, it's such an attack on the First of Fucking Amendment. Hillary Clinton's totally right. The problem is that a lot of this kicks off with their deplorables comments. Literally, I mean, you look right now, you look at the, uh, the um, what is it called? Uh, uh, change the Terms movement or something, the craftivist movement of authoritarians, a bunch of fascist jackboot lickers. Now, trying to force websites to change their terms of service to try to <laughs> deny service of any kind to anyone who, who they disagree with. Wow, I wonder how that works. It's not us that needs to be censored, it's these other guys. Well, you know it's a double-edged sword, and some of these people are delusional. They mean well, and the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I'm much more worried about them than some corrupt individual that actually just wants to be an ass and inconvenience others. The corrupt individual, it's like, oh, yeah, whatever, no one's going to listen to you because you're probably crazy anyway. Well-meaning, self-righteous individuals are a thousand times more uh, dangerous than corrupt, violent individuals are. 
You can do something to change the mind of the corrupt, violent individual, but if someone believes that they're doing what's right, try changing their mind and convincing them, hey, you know all this corporate censorship, you're, you're really just a pawn of billionaires and you're ruining the internet. You do realize that you're contributing to potentially, down the road, the, the pro proliferation of war, because there won't be any anti-war voices speaking out anymore. The proliferation of more corporate fascism, in violations of your privacy at every stage in your life, the police state, the surveillance apparatus, all of these things will be unrestrained because the, the main mode of human communication will no longer be a free, a free place where people can actually voice themselves against it. There will be more wars, there will be more human suffering, you are literally contributing to the collapse of civilization, and yet they think they're doing what's right. Never gonna change their mind, it's never gonna fucking happen. So yes, Hillary, uh, you're totally, totally right. But you're looking at it from the perspective of a rich, dynastic, lamestream politician and saying, oh my god, it's such a terrible time. People disagreed with me and I lost an election and shit two years ago. I think that that's a wonderful thing. The other thing, I will take umbrage with Trump supporters. They still think he's a panacea to everything uh, and will magically solve the problems. Oh, just believe Q or what? No, no, no. He's not going to magically solve problems. He can't even get the border wall funded right now. You know, good luck to him trying. I think he's trying to do what's right, but he's kind of hobbled. There are people who think that it's like Ann Coulter when she rambles. He's like, oh, still no wall, still no, no, this reformed invest. It's like, yes, uh, Ms. Coulter, he should ignore the Constitution entirely and, and, and just say, you know, fuck the courts, fuck the legislature. Now I'm dictator. I'm just going to build it anyway. That's not how our government works. Sometimes you could make the argument and be more pragmatic. Thankfully, we restrain ourselves from giving dictatorial power to the executive, or to the legislature, hopefully, uh, and we restrain government. Yes, it's better for it to be slower and less efficient than for it to be highly efficient and become tyrannical, because then it can just steamroll all of your rights. Oh, guns? Yeah, no problem. We'll just shoot everyone. Yeah! The funniest argument against gun control, the only way to implement it, is by shooting a bunch of people. I suppose you could use explosives. Those aren't guns, but, you know, it defeats the purpose still. No, Hillary Clinton's totally right. She's just right for the uh, totally wrong reasons. That's about all. Peace out.